welcome viewers to this series of lectures on modern european history and we have earlier spoken of uh, quite a few themes uh, related to the modern european history beginning from the french revolution across napoleon across the transactions that were done at the uh, uh, at the instance of defeat of napoleon at vienna and uh, there we discussed that uh, the political clock of europe was put back to pre 1789 days meaning thereby that uh, in most parts of europe uh, monarchy was reinstated and uh, those ruling houses and lineages uh, who had been ruling over a particular area in the pre french revolutionary phase they were brought back to rule over these areas subsequent to the defeat of napoleon uh, in those discussions we also saw that this particular uh, this particular effort by the uh, i would say reactionaries to reinstate monarchy and try and see uh if this could uh this could uh, uh i mean put some kind of a speed uh breaker on the ongoing uh trend towards uh middle class assertion for liberalism uh creation of republican nation states and so forth uh whether they could succeed or not that is what we are going to see today with specific reference to france and the period uh, would be 1815 to 1830 so in precise terms we are going to talk about the liberal gains in france from 1850 to 1830 so over these 15 years we will try and see how and through what means liberal aspirations could be articulated despite the political arrangement that was done at vienna for france was that of monarchy so how within or beneath monarchy uh, some rumblings for uh, liberal aspirations got its articulation there were some gains there were several failed attempts uh, and so forth uh it goes on up to 1848 and thereafter we find some kind of a decisive break from the traditional mold of uh, political uh, rule and thereafter in greater part of europe we find uh, modern nation states coming up be it the unification of uh, italy or uh, unification of germany and so forth so second half of the 19th century is a story about the liberal uh, republican constitutional states coming into being in different parts of europe so uh, in this lecture we are uh, discussing only the developments from around 1815 to around 1830 with reference to france and with reference to the liberal gains please keep in mind as i keep repeating uh, uh, in my earlier discussions also i have told you that if one has to view 19th century europe you have to keep in mind the thematic prevalence of liberalism nationalism and socialism now for this timeline that we are concerned with over here 1815 to 1830 uh, socialism is a little uh, premature here because it comes into uh, its full bloom and assertion through working class movement etc only subsequently as uh, more and more areas of france industrialized so there is uh, there is uh, uh, some kind of a strengthening of uh, organization and number of the working class across countries in europe and that's when you have karl marx uh, engels and so forth and uh, some kind of a uh, envisioning of uh, a different order 
uh, in, in uh, even in uh, political uh, sense of the term. So, uh, in this from the period 1815 to 1830 in France, we find that the arrangement which was uh, a traditional arrangement that was carried out at Vienna, uh, that arrangement was to the liking of the French upper middle class. Now, please forgive me for this uh, typo error, uh, 1814 to 1815 is what it should be and uh, this is the uh, time of uh, the Vienna conference and uh, the arrangement that was done was that the monarchy would be brought back and resultantly it is from the same ruling house uh, we have uh, we had heard of uh, uh, the earlier Louis uh, getting, uh, uh, getting uh, guillotined, getting killed during the revolution around 1792-93 and now from the same ruling house we have Louis 18. So, instead of Louis 16, now you have Louis 18 um, who was uh, made the monarch uh, of France, who was made the king of France. Uh, we all know that France was the vanquished power uh, in, the, in that conference uh, at Vienna. Uh, Napoleon had been defeated and you have monarchy coming back in France. Now, whatever arrangement that was made uh, for the European order, political order, that uh, seemed to be very comfortable for the middle class liberal principles as well. And Louis XVIII was also comfortable with middle class liberal principles. He knew that uh, uh, he, he cannot think of uh, the way Louis XIV uh, ruled or he cannot think of the way uh, even Louis XVI ruled. So, it was a transformed time and um, he was happy that uh, at least monarchy is back. And uh, therefore, there is a degree of uh, accommodation that had to be carried out. So, uh, do not understand monarchy in the classical pristine sense of the term uh, because here uh, it is a monarchy where the legal equality or the issues like careers being thrown open to talent, uh, even the existence of two chamber parliamentary government uh, and also voting rights. Of course, they were uh, qualified by property uh, qualifications. So, all these things were very much there and Louis XVIII had to reconcile with it. So, uh, and, and he, he felt comfortable with it. So, these middle class liberal principles, be it legal equality, be it careers being thrown open to talent, be it parliamentary government in the form of two chamber houses uh, and uh, voting uh, rights, uh, though uh, confined by uh, property qualifications, they were very much there and they were, uh, they were uh, very soothing uh, to, the liberal, uh, to the liberal people. So, uh, liberals uh, had made this bit of gain over here. And uh, in fact, Louis XVIII had to issue a constitutional charter to guarantee these. So, uh, the gains, liberal gains that had been made during the revolution and during the Napoleonic period is not completely lost sight of, is not completely uh, done away with. Rather, they are retained in this arrangement that was carried out in 1814-15 at Vienna. Although it was a monarchy, but within monarchy, these constitutional uh, uh, arrangements actually guaranteed these rights. right? And uh, therefore, you also find that though you call it democracy, you call it voting rights and so forth. Uh, liberals did not want it to go completely out of their hands either. They did not want to uh, radicalize it uh, uh, to, to any more level. Right? So, 
liberalism at this stage is only this liberalism at this stage is a political arrangement that suited the middle class or upper middle class at this point of time they do not want a genuine uh, uh, voting rights for all kind of arrangement uh, being carried out however once those aspirations had been set in people in terms of their ability to vote or their uh, in uh, their getting enabled to vote uh, when some sections of people were denied that right obviously uh, there was a palpable sense of rancor in them and uh, those tensions could very well be felt as you can see uh, a vast majority in france particularly those who were born after 1789 uh, were denied the right to vote at this point of time given the uh, property qualifications and other technicalities by which voting uh, rights will occur to an individual and therefore this section of young people actually constituted a source of great instability and uh, resultantly uh, subsequent to louis 18 which is the period of 1824 to 1830 we have charles the 10th or charles 10th who took over after the death of louis 18 and uh, a little peek into the personality of charles 10 would reveal that he was uh, an honest fellow all right but was a determined reactionary and an absolutist now please remember uh, days of absolutism are gone um, people have seen particularly in france they have seen as to what uh, uh, liberalism is all about what uh, democratic aspirations are all about what uh, reason and rationality is all about and they had even experimented with it the dent given by the revolution to the prestige and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, the paraphernalia around uh, monarchy uh, was uh, was irreparable Uh, so uh, of course despite the personal inclination of monarchs uh, it was just not possible to uh, to bring back those arrangements that we actually uh, understand by this term absolutism if it reminds you of the times of louis 14 that's not what we are talking of but uh, through his uh, personal uh, you can say bent of mind he appears to be uh, absolutist and he appears to be reactionary not in uh, that mood to go on yielding more and more to the uh, liberal class and therefore uh, liberals uh, found him uh, somewhat uneasy uh, to deal with the level of comfort with which uh, liberals uh, negotiated with charles 18 uh, was was different uh, sorry louis 18 was different from uh, uh, what they had to do with charles 10 in fact at the discretion of charles 10 uh, the french assembly actually voted indemnities to the aristocratic emigres now who are these aristocratic emigres and what is this indemnity uh, remember while talking of the french revolution uh, particularly in the first two stages of the revolution i told you that uh, fearing the fury of the jacobins and the radicals and the mob on the streets of paris several aristocrats uh, had actually left france and uh, generally had uh, migrated to uh, taken shelter somewhere in austria where uh, they had the same family line or uh, a monarchy that had a family connection with the ones uh, in france uh, and they these uh, aristocrats who for the moment had gone and settled in austria or in the neighboring countries were fomenting what we know as the counter revolutionary uh, activities all through the french revolution they were the ones who were fueling it right 
Uh, obviously, those of them who had left France, their land had been taken away, their uh, several uh, properties had been damaged or even uh, taken uh, by someone else and uh, they had suffered uh, in terms of uh, their uh, property and when they are coming back, uh, the state or the king is allowing them or facilitating some kind of relief to them through these indemnities, right? This much had changed so far as the political climate of the time is concerned. Remember, 20 years back, they are the ones who were fleeing the country in uh, fear and now with monarchy uh, being uh, reinstated uh, by the Vienna Conference and Charles X, who was personally more predisposed to uh, reactionary and absolutist ideas, is getting the French Assembly to vote for indemnities to the aristocratic emigres. Even the church was allowed the exclusive right to teach in French, French classrooms. Remember uh, the umbilical cord with uh, the papacy, papal control had been uh, had been broken uh, during the revolution, uh, during Napoleon uh, period. Of course, there was some kind of reproachment, that, but that also was a very guarded reproachment. It was not uh, give it all back to the papacy kind of a thing. He was very measured in, uh, in reaching out to, uh, to the church and, uh, and so forth. But here, uh, during Charles X uh, rule from 1824 to 1830, what we find is that church is also uh, finding its way back uh, in terms of uh, influence and control over, over France. So France was no more a godless state and uh, the exclusive right to teach in fr French classrooms uh, was back with them. Uh, remember, uh, Napoleon had uh, replaced and he, he had a lot of uh, uh, reform initiatives in uh, education sector where he used to train uh, teachers at uh, designated institutes located in Paris and there was some kind of a national character that was given to the curriculum um, uh, and, and uh, that, was, uh, uh, that was not a religious curriculum that was taught. But here, uh, again, uh, uh, seeing the uh, conservative uh, backdrop of the uh, post-1815 times, church is uh, getting back uh, into its business of teaching. Uh, in the French classrooms. Obviously, uh, these measures uh, infuriated the upper middle class uh, of France who had become more powerful owing to the growing industrial economy because industrialization is on. Uh, industrialization is an ongoing process. Uh, trade and commerce is doing well and uh, the entrepreneurial class or the capitalists uh, or the upper middle class is making money. So, they are Away from power, it's a monarchy, but economy-wise, they are doing very well, upper middle class. So, uh, their fury at these reactionary measures by Charles X uh, meets fair degree of resistance and they even headed a rebellion against these reactionary policies of Charles X. So, in March 1830, there is an instance of vote of no confidence uh, by the Chamber of Deputies and uh, Charles in uh, response to this, Charles X, the monarch in response to this uh, actually dissolves the chamber and uh, calls for new elections. New elections happened, government was to form and that was also again dissolve a slew of repressive measures followed including press censorship. So, this is what we mean when we say that 
this uh, particular uh, or these uh, three four decades post 1815 uh, is a decade of uh, reactionaries where uh, monarchy and authority absolutist authority was at least sought to be uh, you know uh, reinstated although uh, they could not last long nor did they have any fair chance of uh, uh, of uh, surviving for long uh, amongst the slew of uh, repressive policies we also find that uh, during this period under charles 10 even the suffrage rights got further restricted so uh, those people or percentage of people who uh, who were enfranchised or who had the right to vote that also declined and subsequent to that also new elections were called and this constituted a kind of revolution uh, or revolutionary situation in 1813 france and this was again uh, uh, led by the republicans um, and if you look at the social profile of those who were at the uh, at the uh, or in the front of uh, this uh, revolutionary fervor were the workers the artisans the students the writers and it uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, in fact uh, a throwback at least in style uh, to what was happening in paris or in france during the french revolution the jacobin assertion so for the way picketing was done the way uh, protests used to be organized the way placards would be kept the way uh, they would shout slogans and so forth uh, that is what uh, the revolution in france in 1789 had uh, set uh, a fashion off and uh, here these republicans the workers the artisans the students the writers in paris in 1830 are uh, are fashioning their protest uh, along those lines so the parisians took to the streets uh, they barricaded uh, areas uh, they defied the army and police although it uh, did not uh, uh, succeed over a long term nevertheless charles had to charles 10 had to abdicate the crowd the uh, the set of people that i just told you about wanted a genuine republic uh, but those with power as i just told you the upper middle class who had been doing very well uh, economically uh, namely the bankers the merchants and also the industrialists would not want this kind of a genuine rep- republic so uh, they they got none of these rather they brought the duke of orleans to the throne as king louis philippe uh, who ruled from 1830 to uh, 1848 with the promise that he would abide by the constitution of 1814 which i told you was very friendly uh, for the liberals or which was uh, which had been meeting the liberal needs well so uh, although uh, the people on the streets are uh, of a different social profile ultimately they they are the ones who create Uh, revolutionary situation but ultimately the political uh, arrangement uh, that follows as a consequence of it works in favor of the upper middle class and here the franchise uh, the voting rights was extended from 1 lakh to 2 lakh males but the basis of property owners did remain even uh, during the period from 1830 onwards uh, to up to 1848 the monarch uh, obviously was to reign but certainly not to govern so that uh, sums up uh, the situation here in terms of the liberal gains the small liberal gains uh, that were made from 1815 to 1830 in france thank you